Imagine stepping into a world frozen in time, where the ground trembles under the weight of colossal beasts and the air echoes with roars that could shatter the silence of eternity. It's not a fantasy, it's the prehistoric landscape of North America. Some 30,000 years ago, when the first human wanderers crossed into this untamed wilderness. These early arrivals, the ancestors of Native American peoples, didn't just survive, they navigated a realm teeming with creatures that dwarf today's wildlife in size, ferocity, and sheer otherworldliness. Picture vast grasslands stretching endlessly, dotted with armored giants lumbering like living tanks, saber-fanged predators lurking in the shadows, and towering herbivores reshaping the earth with every step. This wasn't a land of easy conquest. It was a brutal symphony of adaptation where humans learn to thrive amid monsters that time has long since erased. Today, we're diving deep into this ancient saga, exploring the extinct megafauna that shared the stage with these prehistoric pioneers. But this isn't just a list of lost animals. It's a story of resilience, evolution's wild experiments, and the delicate balance that once defined life on this continent. Stick around because by the end, you'll see how these ancient encounters still whisper lessons to us in the modern world. To truly grasp this prehistoric drama, we need to rewind the clock to the late Pleistocene epoch, a time when massive ice sheets carved the landscape and sea levels were low enough to expose land bridges like Beringia, the gateway that allowed humans to migrate from Asia into the Americas. These early groups, often called Paleo-Indians, were nomadic hunter-gatherers, equipped with stone tools and an unyielding spirit. But the real stars of this era were the animals a cast of megafauna that evolved over millions of years in isolation, only to face the ultimate disruptor, human ingenuity. What fascinates me is how these creatures weren't just background noise, they shaped human strategies for survival, from hunting techniques to cultural myths. Let's peel back the layers of time and meet some of these vanished icons, focusing on their roles in this ancient ecosystem and the insights they offer into evolution's playbook. Starting with one of the most armored denizens of this prehistoric world, the Glyptotherium, a behemoth that blurred the lines between mammal and dinosaur. This wasn't your garden variety armadillo. It was a supersized version, stretching over two meters long and tipping the scales at more than a ton, comparable to a modern giraffe in weight, but squat and impenetrable. Its body was encased in a dome of bony plates, some as thick as five centimeters, far denser than any shell on today's turtles. Evolutionarily, this armor likely emerged as a defense against the era's apex predators, a testament to natural selection favoring protection in a world of constant threats. But here's where my analysis kicks in. While the Glyptotherium's shell provided unmatched security, it wasn't a prison of immobility. The plates were loosely connected, allowing a surprising flexibility that could have let it dodge or pivot away from danger. And that tail, oh, the tail, composed of bony rings with pointed ends, it might have served as more than decoration. Some researchers speculate it could swing at speeds up to 40 kilometers per hour, delivering bone-crushing blows. Personally, I see this as evolution's clever compromise, heavy defense paired with offensive potential, much like how modern rhinos use their horns not just for show, but for survival. In the prehistoric setting, Glyptotheriums roam the southern U.S., from Texas to Florida, grazing on vegetation in open savannas. Their success speaks to a balanced ecosystem where herbivores like this could flourish despite predators. But when humans entered the scene, the dynamics shifted. Archaeological sites reveal butchered remains, suggesting these armored giants occasionally ended up on the menu. This interaction highlights a key insight. Early humans weren't reckless. They targeted vulnerabilities, perhaps using fire or traps to exploit the creature's slower speed. It's a reminder of how innovation allowed small bands of people to challenge nature's fortresses. Yet in reflecting on this, I can't help. Shifting gears to the carnivores that prowled these ancient plains, we encounter the direwolf a name that evokes mythic terror, but was grounded in raw evolutionary power. 
Contrary to popular belief, these weren't oversized wolves. They belonged to a distinct genus more akin to jackals, yet scaled up to rival the largest gray wolves, with some pushing 110 kilograms. Their reddish fur and pack dynamics painted a picture of social hunters dominating the landscape. What intrigues me most is their bite. Studies indicate it was the strongest among canines, with hyena-like adaptations for crushing bone. This wasn't accidental. It evolved for tackling megafauna like ground sloths or bison, allowing dire wolves to access marrow that others couldn't. In packs of up to 30, they would have coordinated ambushes, turning the open tundras into killing grounds. Prehistorically, dire wolves were ubiquitous, outnumbering other predators in fossil sites like the La Brea tar pits by thousands. This abundance suggests they were ecosystem keystones, controlling herbivore populations and preventing overgrazing. For early humans, they represented direct competition. Both vied for the same prey in overlapping territories. While no fossils show direct clashes, the overlap implies tense standoffs, perhaps with humans scavenging wolf kills or vice versa. My take? This rivalry accelerated human tool development, like better spears, fostering the adaptability that defines our species. It's a sobering analysis. In modern ecosystems, wolves still face human encroachment, echoing these ancient struggles and highlighting the need for coexistence. No prehistoric predator gallery is complete without the Smilodon, the saber-toothed cat that embodied feline ferocity amplified. Focusing on Smilodon fatalis, the species coexisting with humans in North America, it matched lions in size but wielded canines up to 28 centimeters long, longer than a T-Rex's teeth. These weren't for brute force bites. Instead, they evolved for precise thrusts into soft throats, delivering fatal wounds quickly. Evolution here favored specialization, a weaker jaw overall, but paired with retractable claws and exceptional jumping ability, leaping over three meters to pounce on prey many times its size. Brain scans reveal heightened senses, akin to modern cats, making it a stealthy ambush artist. In the Pleistocene wilds, Smilodons haunted forests and grasslands, targeting giants like young mammoths or horses. Fossil clusters suggest prides, amplifying their threat through cooperation. For humans, this meant not just competition, but potential predation. Their size and weapons could easily overpower an isolated hunter. Analyzing this, I see Smilodons as symbols of evolutionary trade-offs. Those sabers were deadly but fragile, prone to breaking if misused. This vulnerability might explain why they didn't dominate forever. In human terms, it underscores how specialized traits can lead to extinction when environments change. A lesson mirrored in today's big cats facing habitat loss. Towering above even these was the Arctidus, or giant short-faced bear, a colossus that redefined Ursine might. Standing 3.4 meters on hind legs and weighing up to 957 kilograms, Outmassing some dinosaurs, this bear was built like a tank, with robust limbs, massive claws, and a broad skull lined with powerful teeth. Yet, my deeper dive reveals nuance. Isotopic studies show it was an opportunistic omnivore, not a pure carnivore. In some regions, it leaned herbivorous. In others, meat-heavy, adapting to local competition. This flexibility was key in a crowded prehistoric arena, where agile rivals like Smilodons outhunted it, forcing Arctidus to scavenge or kleptoparasitize, stealing kills from others, including humans. Prehistorically, Arctidus ranged across North America, its size intimidating enough to claim carcasses without a fight. Bites on mammoth bones near human sites suggest overlaps, where bears might have bullied early hunters away from hard-won prey. Personally, I analyze this as nature's power dynamic, size as a deterrent, much like how grizzlies today assert dominance, but it also highlights human cleverness, perhaps using fire or group tactics to reclaim meals. This bear's story warns of over-reliance on physical prowess as climate shifted, its bulk became a liability contributing to extinction. Now to the true titans, the proboscideans, 
Colombian mammoths, woolly mammoths, and American mastodons that loomed like living mountains over the prehistoric vistas. The Colombian mammoth at 3.75 meters tall and 12.5 tons outsized African elephants, while woolies hit eight tons with insulating fur and mastodons packed 11 tons into a stockier frame. Tusks serve multi-purposely, digging, defense, foraging. Evolution sculpted them for diverse habitats, grasslands for Colombians, tundras for woolies, forests for mastodons, making them ecosystem engineers, uprooting trees and creating clearings. Human interactions intensified around 13,000 years ago with the Clovis culture's fluted points, enabling targeted hunts on vital organs. Kill sites show grueling pursuits with animals tracked until they bled out. Beyond meat, these beasts fueled culture. Bones became tools, art engravings, portable treasures. My insight? This marked humanity's shift from opportunistic foragers to apex influencers, altering ecosystems profoundly. Yet early hunts often failed, spears shattering on thick hides, teaching trial and error adaptation. Less imposing but equally intriguing was the camelops, a lanky camel adapted to North American shrublands, 20% taller than modern camels, with elongated legs for traversing vast distances. Trackways reveal migratory patterns, grazing on coarse plants. Humans hunted them sporadically, but sites lack heavy tool evidence, suggesting they weren't priorities. Analyzing why, perhaps their speed and scarcity made them elusive, illustrating selective hunting strategies in prehistoric economies. Finally, the Castoroides, or giant beaver, aquatic oddity up to 2.2 meters long and heavier than a large dog. Its textured incisors and powerful bites suited woodwork or defense, while webbed feet and a long tail aided swimming. Diet focused on submerged plants, differing from modern beaver's woody fare. Interactions with humans were minimal. One site mixes artifacts and bones, but myths in indigenous lore hint at cultural echoes. This creature embodies evolution's aquatic innovations, thriving in wetlands that buffered human encroachment. To bring this prehistoric tapestry to life, let's weave in some vivid real-world echoes. Consider the Manus Mastodon site in Washington State, where a 13,800-year-old mastodon rib bears embedded bone projectile, clear evidence of a human hunt, gone awry or successful. Archaeologists envision a group of Paleo-Indians ambushing the beast near a watering hole, their spears glancing off fur until one struck true. Or the Blackwater Draw site in New Mexico, a Clovis hub with mammoth remains alongside tools, painting a scene of communal butchering under the stars, where families processed hides for shelter amid the chill. Even today, in Alaska's remote tundras, thawing permafrost reveals woolly mammoth tusks, reminding us of hunters who once tracked these giants across Ice Age plains. These stories aren't abstract. They're tangible links, like the indigenous tales from Canada's First Nations, depicting oversized beavers as mythical builders inspired by Castoroides fossils encountered generations ago. Such examples make the ancient world relatable showing how survival hinged on observation and respect for nature's scale. As we emerge from this journey through prehistoric North America, one clear lesson stands out. Humanity's arrival didn't just coincide with megafauna's decline. It accelerated it through hunting and competition, compounded by climatic shifts. Yet, this isn't a tale of villainy. It's a mirror reflecting our capacity for adaptation and the fragility of ecosystems. In today's world, where species vanish at alarming rates, we must heed this takeaway. Balance innovation with stewardship, ensuring future generations inherit a planet as wondrous as the one our ancestors once roamed. If we learn from these lost giants, we can preserve what's left and perhaps prevent history from repeating its extinctions.